The point that I would like to make in this video is that you don't have to follow the strict order of Gaussian elimination when inverting a matrix according to the row reduced echelon form algorithm. As long as you end up with the identity matrix in the left half, you're guaranteed to have the inverse of this matrix in the right half. This point is especially relevant when you're doing everything by hand and you're given a matrix like this. And of course, if you're doing everything by hand, you would like to avoid fractions. And if you look at this matrix, not only does it have a zero in this position where you would like to have a pivot, but there's actually no good entry in the first column that would allow you to avoid fractions even if, even if you did switch a few rows. But you're allowed to be creative with the order of operations. And we have so far given a couple of justifications to this algorithm and one more is coming up. And you can use any one of those arguments to convince yourself that the order really doesn't matter. That the only thing that matters is that you're only using the three operations of Gaussian elimination and that you end up with the identity matrix in this position. So once again, you can be creative with the order. And what would be a smart way to approach this matrix? Which entry would you use as the pivot first? And I think that the one that comes out at you is one, this one, because it's already one and it's in the right spot. So this is a good first pivot. So let's use this one as our first pivot and then continue to be creative with the order and just do it in the most convenient way, whatever convenient means. In this case, I'm using the word convenient to mean to avoid fractions, but you may have some other considerations, some other ways you prefer of seeing things. So let's see what happens. So let's use this one as the pivot. So the first operation is to eliminate everything above this one. And of course, even these eliminations you can do in a creative order. The order is entirely up to you. That's the takeaway from this video. So the first operation would be to add row three to row two. And now we have a one here. It's gonna get a little messy. A one here, a zero here by design. Nothing, nothing, and a one here. And I think we're actually off to a pretty good start. So the next step is to eliminate this one. And that of course is done by subtracting row three from row one. So subtracting row three from row one, subtracting row three from row one puts a two right here, a one right here, zero here by design, nothing here, nothing here, minus one. All right, and we're done with the first group of operations. We have our first pivot and everything above it is eliminated. All right, where would the next pivot come from? Well, we could look back to the first column and now we have a nice one here, so we could switch the first two rows. But if we continue to be creative, why not just use this one as the next pivot? It's already in the right spot and it already equals one, so let's use this as our next pivot. Now, do we want to eliminate stuff above it or below it first? Well, it doesn't really matter, so let's go for this one below it first. So that operation would be to subtract row two from row three. Subtract row two from row three. So this negative two becomes a negative three. This becomes zero by design. Nothing happens here, nothing happens here. Now we're doing some subtractions minus one and zero here. Okay, now let's eliminate this one above it. And you do that by subtracting row two from row one. Subtracting row two from row one puts a one here. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, minus one and minus two. And we're done with the second group of operations in Gaussian elimination. And we're down to the last column, which would have been the first column, of course, but now it's the last column. All right, we already have a one, a little bit lucky, but that's how I designed this example. So the rest is straightforward. It is to subtract row one from row two. Subtract row one from row two. Subtract row was this a one from row two and subtract row one from row two. 
All right, if this had been a one, then this is now a two. Okay, there you go. And finally, is to add three of row one to row three. And we're done on the left side, left hand, on the left, in the left half, it's the identity. So it was, and now I forget what it was. I think it was a negative three, so we're adding three of row one to row three. Adding three of row one to row three. Adding, so I had to go back and check on the video what number had been here. So that's why it's always better to copy than to erase. So I guess there are two lessons that we learned from this video. One is something we knew before, copying is better than erasing, just for this very reason. And of course the main point, you can do your operations in any order. So this had been a minus three. So we're indeed adding three of row one to row three. So we have a three here, a negative four here, and a negative six here. And we're done. We have the identity matrix in the left half. So this is the inverse of the matrix A. One minus one minus two, negative one, two, three, three, negative four, negative six. And we were able to carry through the entire algorithm without encountering any fractions, all thanks to our creative order in which we performed Gaussian elimination, which was much less painful than it would have been had we pursued Gaussian elimination in the proper order, starting with the first column, then the second column, and finally the last column. So that's the main message of this video. Be creative with the order of operations in Gaussian elimination when pursuing the row reduced echelon form algorithm for matrix inversion. Be a little bit more careful when the task is simply to compute the row reduced echelon form of some matrix. Then the order is important. It wouldn't be important if you know exactly which columns are the pivot columns, but if you don't know that in advance, and there is indeed a lot of linear dependencies, then switching the order may end up with a different matrix than the standard row reduced echelon form. That matrix that you would end up with would be just as good and just as effective and just as helpful as the row reduced echelon form of the matrix. It just won't be the canonical form of the row reduced echelon form where the pivot columns must come as soon as possible. So there you go. In that case, it wouldn't, the order might matter, but when you're doing the inversion and you know exactly where the pivot columns will be, in this case, the first half of all the columns, then the order doesn't matter and you should be creative. In other words, do the operations in the order that you would find most convenient.